Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Full Pelt Music Podcast. Shortly we'll be joined by King Nun, who have recently released their new album, Lamb. But before then, the usual mind is from myself. If you would, please do follow Full Pelt on social media. We're on Facebook at Full Pelt and on Twitter and Instagram at Full Pelt Music. And again, if you would, please do hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, whatever you're watching or listening. Welcome to James from King Nun to the Full Pelt Music Podcast. Absolutely delighted to have you on today. How are you doing? Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm doing really well, thank you. Um, yeah, we just got back from doing some in-store shows last night, doing a little tour up the country. Um, so yeah, which was really, really fun. So yeah, I'm feeling really good, feeling really energised. <laughs> yeah, I do love these in-stores. Um, obviously, it's a kind of new-ish phenomena, especially on the sort of level that bands do them these days. Um, but it's such a great way to connect with your with your audience and obviously um, get to play these new songs live so I'm sure you had a, a great time across the dates. Yeah absolutely it was so much fun and it was nice because it's been a while since we've done anything that was um, in a headline capacity so it was nice to see you know fans who's specifically coming for us it was really yeah it was loads of fun and loads of fun to meet some some new people as well as see some people we haven't seen for a while so yeah it was great. Excellent, excellent. And uh, obviously, we're going to talk a bit more about the live side of things uh, coming up, because there's a few dates for us to to kind of plug. But we really want to get into, obviously, Lamb, your second album that's just come out. And uh, before we do, we're going to kind of take it chronologically, and we're going to go back a little bit to uh, Mass, which was your debut album that came out at the end of uh, 2019, which obviously... As soon as you say end of 2019, beginning of 2020, yeah. instantly people get kind of chills down their spine. So obviously putting out a debut album just ahead of the pandemic, um, obviously, how frustrated were you not to be able to properly um, sort of promote that album coming out? Oh, uh, it was it was really frustrating. Um, yeah, it was a it was a very odd time. We actually um, in because we did a headline tour supporting Mass uh in sort of february march kind of thing and that was across europe and it was kind of thing we were right on the very edge of it we were um so we would leave a country and then that country would close its borders and we ended up cancelling one show ahead of time not bad um yeah no i know yeah. it was, we, we were very lucky in that sense but we actually had a discussion in the uk before we left for that because it was still just starting we were saying because we had a, a an american tour lined up for like May, I think. And it was, it was a thing of saying, well, if we do the European tour, uh, or no, what was it? I'm trying to think. Basically we were saying like, can we, can we like, are we sure we're gonna be able to do that American tour? Is there gonna be some knock on from doing the European shows? Because we weren't sure how serious it was at that time. It was all, it was a very strange thing. And we ended up not doing that tour obviously, because um, just everything shut down. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it was, it was, a it was weird. It was, um, yeah. And it, it was a shame to sort of, it, it sort of left an, an unfortunate full stop on the album, uh, which is a shame because we're all proud of it. Um, so yeah, but no, no, I mean, I think we're thinking we're going to do everything much better this time. <laughs> That's the hope. Yeah, um, that is definitely the hope. And obviously, um, yeah. although it's definitely not out of the news, uh, we do seem to obviously uh, be kind of out of the woods and, and everything is going OK, touch touch some wood um, <laughs> at the moment, which obviously out of adversity quite often is born, um, obviously, some positives. And, and you had some extra time there that perhaps you weren't going to have. And obviously, um, the outcome of all of that is, is Lamb, which we obviously um really really love the album we've reviewed it in our magazine um last week and obviously listeners can uh, check out that that review it's really positive great album so looking forward to kind of delving into it and for you in particular having experienced what you did with that false sort of stop there with uh with mass you know does that make lamb and everything that's sort of coming with it you know playing the in stores getting out and seeing people does it make it feel even more special to you yeah i think so i think it's been such a long time coming because I mean as as you sort of as you're saying we had all that time to write it um it became and it's I don't think I don't think on a on a on a surface level that any way is about or references it but I do think it, a lot of it is born out of the feelings we had at that time you know there's a lot of um well, there's a lot of sort of at, at the beginning as with everyone there's sort of a lot of isolation and paranoia and 
you know health concern um so that's that i think in like you can hear that in some of the songs um and but then i think the more we were making it the more we realized that the only way to keep going through something that you know is essentially threatening the entire industry and threatening you know everything that we've been working at for all these years the only way to get through is to maintain sort of uh that optimism about you know the nature of what we're doing and why we're doing it and the fact that we we can keep doing it through any anything you know there is always a solution to whatever problem we're facing um so yeah i think um yeah i think i think having that long approach having that much time to make the album really benefited uh just just the whole message and i think it's I think we came away from it with a really clear idea of what its identity is and what it means to us. And I, th I think it's our, it's the best thing we've ever done. So, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. It is a phenomenal album and, and I definitely encourage listeners to, to go and listen to it if you haven't. I mean, um, there's a good chance that the listeners listening to this podcast, I would imagine probably have heard it, but for those perhaps that have not had the opportunity yet, you know, how would you describe that album to them? You know, what, what does, that album mean to you and what the themes behind it perhaps um what's the album mean to us i mean it's sort it's yeah like i say it's it's sort of it's a big it's just a big um it's an amalgamation of all those feelings we're having the name lamb um it's a it's sort of it's a balance between two things it's it's the idea of you know you have the sacrificial lamb which comes with a lot of uh it's it's the idea of a lot of negative feelings are put onto it and it carries this weight of you know the pressures that we feel in life but at the same time the innocence of a lamb <clears throat> um the innocence of a lamb and uh you know the youthfulness of it and i think i think i think uh i think across the album we have a balance of those things you know we have we we try to go back to um sort of originally when we started as a band all of our songs were a lot a lot punkier a lot rawer and a lot more visceral um and i think we kind of drifted away from that a little bit um and when we when we came to do this we're like we weren't quite sure why we weren't quite sure what happened to that because that is that is the music we like and that's who we are so there's a lot of that there but there's also the more mature stuff and the stuff that we had been putting out you know because we are still proud of that music as well i still part of our identity um so yeah i think i think it's um i think the one of the things we're most proud of with the album is that it has got a good variety you know it's it's um it is very much a rock album but um yeah i think there's i think there's a lot of diversity of of sound on there um and i think there's some i hope there's something for everyone on it yeah. um so yeah that's that's how yeah. i'd sum it up yeah, I think that's a good summary. It is a really a, a eclectic sort of collection of music, but also all of it has that sort of King Nun sort of identity to it. Mm. Um, so uh, I say, yeah, definitely, definitely listen to me to, to go and have a listen to to the album. Um, and we'll dive into a few of the singles in just a second. But before we do, just touch on as well, uh, obviously you recorded this one with Marshall Records. Yes. Um, and we have had a few uh, Marshall artists on on this podcast and all of them have spoken um enormously well of of the label so i just wanted to gauge obviously your um experience working with them on the album as well i mean i i don't think anyone can speak more highly of marshall than us we absolutely <laughs> love them they so the, it was just so when we made this album we um i don't know if you know it was our drummer caius who produced it um, because ever since we started um, doing anything as a band, as soon once he joined, he'd always been recording people. He he loves production as much as he does making music. So it was very natural for us, you know, back when we were fifteen or sixteen, straight away, just you know, do the normal thing of get into a rehearsal room and jam out an idea for a while. But then once it's done, we went straight to his his bedroom. And we're like, okay, let's let's throw it into logic and like just make make a make a demo of it and make it as good as we can. That's been an essential part of our process from then all the way through. We always have have demos of all of our songs, um, like that we're quite meticulous about. 
So when we want, so forever we've thought Caius would make an amazing producer for us because he's, um, you know, he knows us so well and he's he's got the the talents to do it. Uh, but Marshall, um, you know, we just get such a good amount of, of freedom and support from them. And that's kind of what you need at the end of the day from a label. That's what any artist wants, uh, is the ability to make whatever they want to make, however yeah. they want to make it. Um, and in the past, we've not really had that option. And there's been, you know, there have been um, people outside of the band, um, you know, I'm sure this is a familiar story to any artist, um, people outside the band saying, you can't do that, that's not going to work. And and on things that the whole band agrees on and are really passionate yeah. about, you know, we've had before people, we've had before songs that we all really want to release on on previous releases, um, and someone saying, I don't think it works, and and then it just never came out, um, which is a, which is a shame. Um, and so yeah, no, it's um, because because Marshall are so just so helpful and amazing and insightful like they still do give us the support we need but i think artistically they've just got this amazing uh trust in the people they sign just to say this is what you want to make go and make it and then yeah let's <laughs> see how yeah. it goes so, so we absolutely love marshall they they have been amazing for us yeah, and that certainly echoes the same sort of sentiments I've heard from all the artists that are on that label that have come on here. So obviously, yeah, it uh, sounds like a fantastic place um, to be, uh, realistically, yeah. definitely. And uh, obviously, um, it's interesting you uh, touched on, you know, uh, third parties in the past saying, oh, you know, we don't think this song should be released, et cetera, et cetera, because it does bring me nicely into my next question, really, um, which is obviously Selfish the Song um, was the first um, taste of the album, really, uh, the first sort of single that came out from it. Um, and I'm always intrigued just to, to gauge, you know, what about that song stood out to make it that big statement single? Um, I think it was when we wrote it, it took a while to write that song, actually, because we had, it, do, it doesn't happen with all of songs, but with Selfish, it was definitely a thing of, um, you know, we come up, we came up with, you know, like a verse part and we thought, oh, that's great. And we tried tacking some things on, it didn't really work. So we thought, oh, we'll put it to one side. And we thought, no, let's try it again. We brought it back and we sort of did a new version of it and a new thing and then another thing, thing stuck. And it took ages and ages. Um, and yeah, and then eventually it was sort of, we were on the cusp of thinking, oh, we've tried this a few too many times, let's get rid of it. And then Nathan, a bassist, came up with uh, sort of the, the riff that opens with. And it all came together so well. And I think, um, I think the reason that it is that first single and that we, you know, we all like it so much um, is because it is just a really like succinct, like pop song at the end of the day um because there yeah as i say there's a lot of different flavors on the album um but like we always we always really care most about um songs like the the art the the, the craft of making a song um that's kind of the most important thing above genre to us um and yeah i think i think we just thought it it fit together the best out of any of the songs on that album i think it's one of our best songs generally um it's just yeah it's it's just super like just how short how much it gets in in such a short time mm. i think we're all really proud of it um i think it's a good i think it's a good summation of who we are as a band as a whole because um you know theo's lyrics on it are just super defined it's got a really clear message to it um and yeah i yeah i think we're all really proud of it so it, it seemed really natural to put it out first yeah i think it was a good choice personally you know for what that's worth uh, definitely um a really good introduction to the record as a whole um and uh sink and feeling is, is the other single i really wanted to sort of zone in on um because it's just a single we've really really enjoyed and we've put on the uh the, the hard and heavy playlist that we have uh, so for listeners can check it out on there so um Obviously, what can you tell us about that song and obviously the themes of that song and how it comes together for you? 
Yeah. Um, so Thea wrote that one about um, a relationship he was in before. Um, and I mean, yeah, I think I think it is the closest thing we've ever written to like a straightforward ballad before. Um, yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah, I think I think that's it at the end of the day. It is a song about a, a relationship. It's it's, uh, you know, it's sort of a. I mean, it is a love song, but I guess it's the interesting thing about it is Theo was writing it uh, like, like, well, he was telling me he wrote it sort of during and after the relationship. So it's kind of all those feelings put together into one, uh, yeah, into into one song, into one perspective and one story. Um, and yeah, I think, I, yeah, again, we're super happy with how it turned out. We always think it's sort of uh, a bit weezerish, you know, which is a really big influence for us. Um, yeah, I think I think that's kind of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. And anything being weezerish is never a bad thing because uh, yeah. they're so amazing, definitely. Um, and uh, I want to touch as well on the, the music video for Sinking Feeling. Now, uh, listeners to the podcast will know that I'm obsessed with music videos. It's a dying art that, you know, I used to grow up watching them, but obviously it's not really a thing anymore. So obviously listeners head to YouTube um, and, and there'll be a links in the bio. You can get to, to the King on YouTube. Obviously, and you've got quite a few videos on there, which is great because some of the bands I've interviewed recently haven't got the videos because obviously that's normally one of the first things that gets cut from a budget these days. That, All right, we can't afford to, to do a video. And, and some of the bands I've interviewed just haven't had any to talk about um but there's loads uh king Nun videos uh for listeners to check out but sink and feeling in particular um you know a great great little video that really fits the song so so well um so how did you conceptualize uh the video and, and how did you put it into practice um yeah so that was that was um so we actually worked with a director uh called flynn matthews who's a friend of ours we've known him for for quite a few years he's um you up you know sort of 10 minutes from all of us. Um, and he actually, um, so the story is, he was making another film called uh, Midpoint, he put out. Um, and he asked us, before the record came out, he, he'd he heard, you know, someone had sent him the, the record and he heard and he heard the song Lamb of the record. And he got in touch with us and he said, um, you know, the, the, that song would fit so well with the film I'm making, is it all right if I put it in there? Um, and we said, and like we all love him, and we loved. We saw the film he, uh, before he put it out, and we said, yeah, that, that would be that would be incredible. Please do. Um, and uh, and then off the back of that, we were sort of because we've been playing around with the idea for the video of sinking feeling for a while, um, which is essentially just the idea of um, you know two people listening to this same song. Theo actually referenced a, I forget, it's a film. God, I can't, it's so irritating. (laughs) I can't remember. I'll look it up afterwards and tell you. It's, it's a film. It's got Johnny Depp in and it's the scene. It's basically the scene. And you know, in like back in the day, in HMV, when you'd have the CD player on the wall and the headphones and you put it on. It's a scene from a shot. It's that. It's these two people listening to, um, listening to a song in a record shop at the same time. Um, but the girl is sort of the, the premise of the scene is the girl's looking at the guy and thinking like, sort of, is he into me? Is, you know, what's, is there, is there something happening? And at the, at the end, it's like, oh no, he just walks off. That's it. Um, so we're sort of trying to hash something out that went around that. And we talked to Flynn about that and said, would you, would you be interested in doing like a video for that? And he loved the idea. So and he just sort of over, over like a day later came back with the script, which is pretty much what is in the um, in the video now. Um, and yeah, it just yeah, it was it worked so well. Um, yeah, it was yeah, just it's and it's so nice. You know, one of the nice things about everything to do with Lamb is that at pretty much every stage uh, we've been working with our friends. You know, um, we uh, we brought our friend Jack to the studio to film it, um, and we brought uh, and Ethan, who's Caius's brother, joined the band because he came to the studio and was helping with some parts and you know helping with the sound of it and stuff. Um, 
and then this uh flynn and we also had um our friend harry our friends harry and tyrese film some of the videos with us and you know it's just uh, i think just having that network of of friends um makes makes it all so much more fun and when you're making art fun, I, fun is such an underrated element yeah of making art and having a like having a good a good like vibe in the the actual process um it just makes everything run so much smoother and so much easier and it makes you have better ideas um so yeah i think i think that sinking feeling uh sinking feeling video and all the videos we've made which was which were made by us or with in conjunction with other people from those same people i mentioned um as as you know paid dividends it's uh I think they've all come together so well, and I'm really proud of all of them. So yeah, yeah, no, you should be, and listeners definitely should. Uh, as I say head to, to YouTube and obviously check them all out because um, such a sort of dying art, as as I always call it, and uh, I, I just love to be able to sort of connect with a band a bit more for a video um, quite often. So definitely, definitely, Sink and Feeling is a, a great example of that, and I, I'm just yeah, really glad to hear you had such a, a great experience recording you know the album, doing everything around the album because as you say, that word fun. Um, so underrated these days we we should all be like trying to find our path in life but obviously one that we enjoy you know it so many other pressures that get put on you sometimes forget actually life short I should be having fun so no. yeah absolutely yeah absolutely fantastic and obviously uh one of the most fun things to do in a band I always thought was uh going out and playing live so um obviously getting back around to that live side of things um, coming up in the next sort of few weeks uh, before Christmas, you've got a couple of uh, bands that you're going to go out and play with, uh, The Witches and Nothing But Thieves, which obviously is going to be uh, pretty special for you. So, I mean, how excited are you to get out and play those shows? Oh, my goodness. Uh, so excited. <laughs> like, it's 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 quite unreal. Um, just, the, just the idea of playing in front of that many people. Um, uh, yeah, the scope of those shows is... We did. We were very lucky in that we got to support Foo Fighters once in mm. twenty nineteen. We did a show with them in, um, in Belfast, and that was, that was that was pretty unbelievable. Um, just just yeah, just the scope of it and see and you know everything that goes on in one of those shows, um, and the and the idea that we're doing a whole tour of those is. You know, pretty unbelievable. Uh, and the witches, we've been a big, um, we've been fans of them for for a long, long time. Um, and uh, yeah, I think just it's going to be. I I feel like, and it's hard to say one of these things before it happens, but I feel like it will uh, inform quite a lot of uh, what you know what the band is, you know, and what uh, what our future is going to look like. So you know, I don't think I can really overstate. How much this how much this tour is going to do you know definitely definitely yeah and uh obviously as you touched upon you, you've you've played with, with bands in, in big venues before uh mm -hmm. and obviously it's always a bit of a challenge especially if you know some bands have got a, a following that perhaps doesn't normally bother with support bands um you know not that either of these bands have but obviously there are bands out there that have a bit of a reputation for that Wait, in your experience, you know, when you go and play these little big shows uh, as a support band, you know, how do you set about building that connection with the audience in these big, big venues? That's a good question. Um, I think, I think um, something I've learned from recent shows is that um, you know, audiences generally are really looking for they they tend to be looking for the same things and they'll be reacting to the same things regardless of um the genre or if they've heard you before and that's that's just having a really really good performance you know both musically and in terms of just how how you act on stage what your what your stage presence is like you know and i th and it seems uh it seems like obvious but then you know when you're watching a band those are the bands you remember as well and um yeah, I think I think I mean we put a lot of focus into both of those things. You know, we take um, we take our live shows very seriously. We do a lot of rehearsals for them, um, and yeah, I think just that spirit of uh, spontaneity as well, being able to react 
uh, on stage to to the audience and to the music you're making. Um, yeah, just a sense of awareness, you know, as to what's happening. Um, I think that I think it is um, something we are actually going to learn a bit more about on this tour, because as you say, um, we have done a few big venues before, but yes. excuse me. But in terms of this kind of scope, it's, uh, yeah, it's, I think it's going to be a challenge, but it's going to be one I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited to see what we learn. But I think, I think as long as we keep doing what we have been doing, we're in with a good chance. <laughs> Definitely. Your attitude is uh, fantastic and I think will serve you well, definitely going into them, them shows. And uh, obviously, you know, hopefully you'll pick up a few, few more fans from those shows and obviously through the release of Lamb. And uh, for those fans that obviously have not had a chance to come to a headline show before, obviously you won't be able to give any specifics because that's always how things work. But will there be more opportunity for fans to catch you at headline shows on this um, sort of promotion cycle for Lamb? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, yeah, maybe I shouldn't say anything. But, uh, no, yeah, I don't want to get into trouble. <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't know what, you know. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're definitely planning more live shows to be, uh, to be coming quite soon. Um, and we're really looking forward to them as well. As I, as I was saying earlier with these installs we've been doing this week, um, it's just nice to see, you know, um, who's out there. And, we, you know, I was actually really surprised by the turnout because, as I say, it's been a while. Uh, but we, we did have quite, quite a lot of people come down. Um, and, yeah, I'm just really excited. I think... I think we're going to have to put a lot of emphasis on these shows and how you know what they look like and how what people take away from them because um yeah i think i think uh i think we owe it to this album especially given that we didn't get much of a chance to do it with the first one uh so yeah no people absolutely can look forward to more headline shows from us quite soon and yes. um yeah i think we're going to deliver on them <laughs> Yeah, and that's good because that's the segue that I'm looking for because obviously the next bit uh, of the podcast is where I give away the social handles and say to everyone that obviously to stay up to date with the band, you need to follow the band on social media um, and that's where you'll hear about these dates when they first get announced. So um, uh, on Facebook, it's King Numb Band and on uh, all of the others, basically, Twitter, uh, Instagram, TikTok is King underscore Num. So um, yeah, quite quite simple for listeners and it will pop up in the corner as I said them hopefully on YouTube. Um, so uh, yeah, encourage listeners to, to follow the band. Um, lots of great stuff obviously coming out of the, the whole Lamb um, process and obviously album coming out the tour and everything like that so definitely a good time to jump on board um, and that brings us to the final portion of the podcast which is where I put you on the spot a little bit so um, it's a newish uh, segment um, we're calling it magic wand um, and basically you yeah, know there is a lot of issues in the music industry um, mm. it's, it's far from perfect so we step into fantasy land for a little while and I'm going to give you a magic wand and you can fix one thing but one thing only in the music industry um, it's, it's always a bit of a difficult one um, because it's hard to pick uh, but what would you choose to fix with that magic wand oh gosh that is tricky <laughs> uh, the first thing that springs to mind Am I gonna say that? <laughs> <laughs> Tricky. Um let me think. Sorry, I'm making a lot of dead air here, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone does. It is a tricky question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the thing that keep the thing that's popping into my head over and over is the idea of um when venues take merch cuts. Yeah. Um because it's just, I think it depends on the size of the band. And I think it is getting a little better because mm. um, it's in my head because we were talking about the other day in America, um, I think uh, Live Nation have yes. done it. Said, are you familiar with this? Where they've yeah. said um, that all their venues under 2000 capacity, they're not going to take a merch cut, which is such a fantastic idea. It is. And you know what? It's... It's just, uh, I think it, it will allow so many more bands to tour, just and and those venues, and it's good for the venues as well because they, you know, more people are going to want to be playing them. 
I don't know if, you know, if, um, I don't know if everyone, if you're not in a band, it's, it can be hard to realize just how expensive it is to do yeah. a tour. You know, it is a lot. And merch is absolutely, uh, you know, it's a lifeline for bands in that sense. So, yeah, no, I think, um, I think, I think, I think I might have to say that, Paul. <laughs> yeah, and it is an important one. It really, really is because yeah. that ecosystem is so fragile and obviously we need to be cultivating new talent. We need the venues to be there for the talent to come through. But mm. the talent need to be able to, you know, financially get to that point in the first place. And it is that fine balance between it all. Um, and that is one of those imbalances at the moment because, yeah. you know, the bands don't get a cut of the bar, for example, do they? Yeah, no, so. exactly. And I think just as well, just, um, you know, it, I think it will give so much more balance to a lot more like grassroots bands which i you know because i feel like now it is becoming a lot more restrictive to those mm. kind of bands you know i feel i feel like it's becoming a top heavy industry again um so yeah no i think i think it will i think it will across the board make such a such a great change so yeah yeah no really good choice really good choice i know it's always putting this uh guests on the spot with that one um, hopefully <laughs> with just the final question to you um you won't be on the spot so much because it's quite simply we just throw the last message back to the list uh to the to the guest uh, and just say yeah have you got anything you'd like to say to the to the listeners today um only that um please listen to lamb uh we worked really really hard on it um and it's a reflection of uh everything we've been doing for the last two years and really a reflection of everything we've always been doing uh so yeah i hope everyone enjoys listening to it as much as we enjoyed making it um and keep your eyes open for announcements of new shows and yeah thank you everybody mm -hmm. Exactly. And I encourage the listeners to do just that. And uh, obviously, thank you, James, for, for coming on the podcast and talking about Lamb. Fantastic album. Listeners, definitely check it out. And uh, obviously, yeah, just wish you all the best with everything coming up, James. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening. I really do hope you enjoyed that chat there with King Nun. Do make sure you check out their new album, Lamb, and of course, follow the band across social media to stay up to date with everything coming from them. You can also stay up to date with Full Pelt Music. We're on Facebook at Full Pelt and on Twitter and Instagram at Full Pelt Music. And again, if you would, please do hit that like button, hit that subscribe button wherever you're watching or listening, because we'll be back very soon with another episode of the Full Pelt Music podcast. <laughs>